Hey guys, how's it going? And I'm back with another episode. I know it's crazy, I made it to two. <laughs> Somehow we're here. So let's just get right into it. So I did one thing while you guys were, or while I was gone uh, in the downtime, is I built like this little kind of grass forest kind of scenery around. And it's just so that when you're inside and you look out the windows, you see pretty much you're in a forest and uh, it's pretty hard to see any way around it. And I did check and I blocked up some windows that were just too hard. See, this is pretty good. Um, that's pretty good. I mean, I, it could have done with a little more denseness going backwards, but you could just think like, oh, I'm at the top of a hill or something. Um, so it's not a huge deal. So it's pretty good. So today what we're gonna do is we are gonna cover um, doors. We are gonna do some data pack stuff and we are going to do some stuff associated with this. So we're gonna do a lot more with uh, commands, but I'm gonna try and use like fairly simple stuff so that you can understand it a little better. So I guess we should get into the tips for today that I didn't write down because they're going to be kind of small. It's gonna be more focused on the commands, but uh, the first thing would be to organize your commands. You gotta keep it organized. If you just throw stuff in random places, then you're gonna have to finish this thing within a week or less because when you come back to it later to try and bug fix at the end, you're gonna be confused as to where things are. So you wanna keep everything consolidated in one place. And the best way to do that is with data packs. I find that doing everything in a data pack, although it may seem a bit crazy and confusing, it's better to just put it all in a data pack and deal with the uh, confusingness and the adjustment to it rather than throw commands in random places and trying to find what's causing the problem in your world. Because one repeating command somewhere can break a billion other things. If you just accidentally type the wrong thing in it or it just doesn't work out the way you want to. There's a lot less bugs associated with data packs because everything's in one place. So then I guess the second thing to say uh, is um, to make sure that things reset. So it's always good to be able to reset your map because at some point you may want the player to, when they die, they come back. So just make sure that anytime you do something, you have a copy of doing that and a copy of resetting that in your files. And we're gonna do some of that today. So you have to go into your world save. And once you're inside your world save, this is HTBAM. Um, it's just you go roaming.minecraft saves and then you get into here. So then you go into data packs and there's nothing here. So we are going to go here and we're gonna go data packs from here. So there's gonna be a link in the description to a zip file of a starter pack. You're just going to want to put it in your data packs folder under .minecraft saves, your world save, data packs, and then you put the folder in there. So starter pack is just something I use. You, you can use your own or whatever. It just has a lot of useful tools in it. And I'm going to, since it's an adventure map, I'm going to make the namespace very small so it's easy to work with. I'm literally just gonna do something like A. And the reason I do this for adventure maps is because I don't care about putting this data pack anywhere else. And I want to make it super easy for me to just uh, call a function. So it's really easy if I just call this do A. Just like that. Now under tags, you're gonna want to go to functions. And I have videos all over all this little things in data packs, but this is the load function and the tick function. So what this does is it tells the game when you type reload or when you open the world, play this. So we're gonna play A colon in it. When you open the world, you're going to play A, uh, then tick is every tick of the game. So every 20 times a second, you're gonna play this. So you're gonna play A colon main. So A colon main comes up every 20 times a second and A colon in it happens whenever you reload the world. So that's simple. You can add more to that if you want, but you really only need one because once you're in the load, you can add other functions. You can make that one function play another function. So it's not a big deal. So this has a block tag called glass, and this is just here so that you have uh, it for later use if we need to. It's just a way of grouping blocks. So you can say like all these blocks are considered glass. And that's what I did here. And uh, I have videos on that too, if you wanna see more in depth of what you can do. And then this is just loot tables. So I have a block loot table. Uh, these are some complicated loot tables to make, so I like to keep them in here. So we have the spawner loot table and the shulker box loot table. So the spawner loot table, what this does is if you have a silk touch pickaxe, 
then it lets you get the spawner when you mine it. And I just have that because it gives an example of having a criteria of some specific item or an enchantment. Uh, it, that way I can use it in other ones if I need it. Then this shulker box one says if you have a drop, if you have a tool that says drop contents colon true as a tag, then it will drop the what's inside the shulker box instead of the shulker box itself, which is also useful for um, player inventory manipulation, but that's way complicated. We're probably never going to do it. I'll just leave it in there though. So now we come into the A namespace. This is all the stuff that you make. Minecraft namespace is all the stuff that gets changed to the game. A is stuff that you make. So under A, we have init and main. So let's open them. And hey, they're empty. So now we can start doing some things, making some stuff. So the first thing is going to be to make the door locked. So to make the door locked, you're going to want to summon a villager. So we want to summon a villager that is invisible. So there's one really easy method to do this. Um, I could just type it, but I'm going to actually open up a generator that I use that I always suggest to everybody that has questions relating to entities or give or stuff like that. Um, so you can go to this generator online and it has pretty much everything you need. Uh, once my Google Chrome opens, because my computer is a laptop and it doesn't want to open anything when I'm in Minecraft. Okay, so you go to mcstacker.net um, and it has 1.13 slash 1.14 compatible commands for everything. So we go to summon and it also has give, replace, all that stuff that you want. And this is your output thing right there. So we are going to summon a villager. Okay. So there's a couple things. So you can do double stack of slimes, that works, but players take damage, I think, unless you give them no AI, or you can just have a bunch of villagers. You can really do whatever works best for you. So let's do the slime and villager method. So we have slimes, and then we go ahead and make it size. Where's it size? Okay, so tags, we'll give it a tag called uh, door one this is the first door and uh then let's go ahead and see where is the size size mm, one i think two is is the correct size all right so then we're going to add a passenger so just plus and we're going to put a slime on top of it it's exactly the same as it so slime tags door one size two so this gives us all this stuff we'll add invisibility later once we figure that out so we'll just go boop and just like that. Holy cow. Okay, that's too large. So TP at E tag equals door one. So we're gonna talk TP all the door ones to negative 100. <laughs> so now they're just gone, gone, gone. Okay, so let's just make the size one because two was too large. And then we have to make them have, uh, where's the no AI, no AI, no AI, true. No AI, true. There we go. So now they won't move around. And let's go ahead and give ourselves a command block to start doing this in, I guess. And we're gonna do it to, you do slash set block and then you can tab complete to get the coordinates. All right, so once you use the tab completion to get the coordinates, you just paste them in here. And now you can do this. And then you can go like this and you can go kit TP at E tag equals door one negative 100. So all this will do is whenever I click the button, it'll just spawn the new one and reset it. So it'll reset, well, it'll reset, kill them, spawn the new one. So we just click that and there you go. So we can see what this looks like. It's not quite perfect. I think I can open this. Yes, I can open this. So um, we may want a third, a third might be necessary. So let's go ahead and add a third. It doesn't hurt to have more than enough. It hurts to have less than enough because if they can get through the door, then that's bad. So we can just add a third and then call this guy door one with this tag. No AI true, size one, copy all this. Oh, now that we have the coordinates, we'll just copy the curly bracket part and then we'll just go like that. Uh, I used control shift arrow and that will select everything until the first space and then there we go so now we got three of them you cannot open the door and it actually bounces you back now we could use a villager to give them information uh that's not quite at the door though let's see 
one, two. So if we move this direction, it goes in the negative X direction. You can see from here. So we'll make this number negative 5.6. If we do that, eh, it's a little too much. Let's go with 5.2. Okay. There we go. Cool. So that makes it so you can't click the door. Easy as pie. Okay. So now we just have to have a second one of them. So we'll just go like that and we'll put a redstone on top so that it gets both of them when I click it. Then uh, this one is going to be what? Uh, well, when we move, we want to move it one to the left. So this goes to negative one. So negative one. And when I click that, oh, uh, let's go with this and let's go with that. And let's go with that. Ooh. It, it does it, it's because of the uh, orientation. This is why commands are kind of inconsistent um, based on the direction. So if you use redstone, it's gonna be based on the direction of, uh, there we go. <laughs> if you use redstone, it's gonna be based on the direction towards the world spawn or whatever. So if you, one side will activate before the other, which is really weird. That's why I prefer data packs. Okay, so cool. So they're both here. We can't get through the door. We can't open it in any way. So now we just have to make it invisible. So we just go in here. We are going to go with active effects and we're gonna go with invisibility. Where is that? Invisibility. There we go. One and we are, this is uh, hide particles, so yes. And we're just going to six, seven, eight. There we go. So this is going to make it for like three years. So uh, hopefully they don't lose their invisibility or we don't work on this for three years. Um, let's go with that and that and that. And then we go with uh, that and that and that and that okay so now the command is a lot longer but i think we can still grab it there we go so we just go like that all right so now when we click it the door oh it was show particles true i should make it false i should make it no you see they say yes or no which is what confuses me it should say true or false because <laughs> that's what the actual command does up here the one or zero is true or false. Okay, cool. So no biggie. Oh, did not copy the whole thing. There we go. So not a big deal. There we go. Now the little bubbles are gone. And let's just see. Let's go into adventure. And I don't take damage either. And the door is locked. Now I could add a villager that says the door is locked, but I don't think that's a super important uh, thing to say. I think they can get that this is locked. So yeah, that's a one way lock. Uh, if you want it to be two ways, you wouldn't want the slimes to be there. You would just want them to be in the middle, but uh, it looks better. This, it feels better this way. So now what did I say before? We're gonna keep things organized. So what we're gonna do is we're going to do in the init function, we're gonna do this, and then we are going to do this, and then we are going to do this. So just in case we ever lose these slimes, they will come back whenever we type slash reload. So let's do this command right here. This will make them go away. So now I can open the doors, which is not good. So if I type slash reload, hey, I can't open the doors because all our hard work was not deleted. So that is a really good way to make sure that things stay together. And that's what I did in um, Midnight Madness. I did it all in a data pack and I used that method so that when I reloaded, everything was fixed and back to where it should be. And I could use it to, uh, I could use it to reset the entire map so people could play again. Um, now there is another thing you could do. You could just call this uh, reset just in case you don't want it to happen on reload because we probably don't need to do this every time we reload. So I'm just going to only keep it in reset. And uh, if we want to, we can do function a colon reset. 
So this could be something that happens on reload, but I don't want it to happen at the moment because these, these guys will probably always be here. But if I ever have a problem, I can just, uh, so if I type reload, uh, let's see, let's kill them. Let me type reload and you will see that they will not come back on reload. But let's say that they were gone and I don't want to type reload or reset everything. Let's just do a reset and now they're back. Because you don't, sometimes like this reload thing is going to, this init function is going to have stuff that you don't really care about during a reset. So we can just keep it separate to reset being map stuff and init being uh, creation stuff. It's just a little organization thing you can do. Okay, so we got blocking the door. Now let's go up and deal with this. So I want to detect when a player sleeps in the bed. So we can try and figure out how this can work. So we can do data, get block, and see if there's anything with that. Well, it doesn't look like there's anything with that. Um, let's see, time set 1400, that's nighttime. Now if I do data, get block, uh, there's nothing different, right? But there is sweet dreams, okay. But that only activates as soon as I hit the bed. I want it to activate once I sleep. So let's go scoreboard objectives, add sleep. Now we can try and look for a scoreboard. So usually minecraft.custom is where all the stats are. And then we can go read them all. We can scroll here. So we have bell ring, boat one centimeter, clean banner, climb one centimeter, damage absorb, damage, 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 death drop, eat cake, enchant, fall, fill, fish, fly, horse, inspect, interact, 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 jump, leave game, you can also use leave game to help reset things if they restart. Uh, mob kills, open barrel, open chest, open stuff, pig play, play, player kill, pot flower, raid trigger, raid went, sleep in bed. So let's see what happens. It does set to one. But not... It sets to one whenever I just right click on the bed. So let's see. Okay, so let's try one other thing. So it sets the one when I sleep in the bed, which is fine. Um, we just need to have a way to reset it when we get out of the bed. So let's see. If I go in the bed and then I leave the bed, I'm right here. Okay, so let's do something else. Let's go with, uh, well, they won't be able to place or break anything. So if we go with one of these, now let's see what happens. All right, I leave at the foot of the bed. Notice how I'm leaving at the foot of the bed, right? Perfect, okay, so the little trick here that we're using is since you leave at the foot of the bed, I can put anybody's score that's in this area of sleep to zero. So if you end up over here, your sleep score is zero. So now we have that idea. So what we're going to do is we're gonna go use a selection of a range. So, so we do scoreboard players set. Now the location is 8, 52, negative 3. That's where these three lines, if you see my, you can't see my curse because this game is stupid. How come I, I don't know. It's just, it's really, I don't like this. This is so annoying. Like, see this right here? You can't see your cursor. It's blocked now. That's so dumb. Um, maybe if I was outside, you would see it. Nope, it still does that. Okay, well, um, you can't see my cursor perfectly, but there's a green and a red and a blue line. And if you make all the lines so that they're in the corner like that, and they line up, then that's the positive corner. So you get the coordinates of the positive corner. Then you get the coordinates of the negative corner. Uh, well, the opposite corner. Uh, 1052, 0. Then you subtract the 2. So you do 8 minus 10 is 2. 52 minus well, we'll make it a little bit taller, so we'll just go three in the y direction. And negative three minus zero is uh, three, or zero minus negative three. You're doing final minus initial, so that would be three. So you do that, then you create the selector. So at A, X equals eight, Y equals 52, Z equals negative three, DX equals two, DY equals three, DZ equals three. 
and then we can do slash say hi. So now it says hi Cloud Wolf because I'm in the area. It still says hi Cloud Wolf, but as soon as I'm here, it doesn't say hi Cloud Wolf. So you can see that this selector picks everybody in that area. So now we do scoreboard players set the selector sleep zero. Cool. So we want that to always happen. So we'll just put that in the main function, which is fine for now. We might want to reorganize it later uh, so that this isn't always happening forever, but uh, we'll put it here for now. Um, then we can go execute if entity at a, uh, no, 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 unless entity at a scores, unless score at a sleep matches zero, run, say hi. So unless there is somebody that has zero, so somebody that's not sleeping, excuse me, then it will say hi, but we want it to do something eventually. Um, and then on the init, we will recreate this scoreboard because we did this, right? We made this thing, so we need to recreate it just in case our scoreboards get reset. And we probably want everybody to have at least a score of zero. So we'll do scoreboard players add at a sleep zero. So this will make everybody have a score of at least zero and this will uh, create the scoreboard. So if we type reload, then you can see this, I'm good. And then when I sleep in the bed, it says, well, let's see. Go into the main function. Oh, okay. You can't do at a. Let's just go with, um, right? You can't go with at a. Okay, so let's go with, instead of, since score doesn't let you use at a, we'll go entity. At a scores equals sleep equals one, uh, equals zero. There we go. Uh, it's weird because score doesn't let you check scores of multiple players, but uh, eh, score doesn't let you check scores of multiple players, but uh, see it's spamming high and now it's not spamming high. Score doesn't let you check scores of multiple players, but uh, entity lets you check multiple players for entities, multiple entities. Um, okay, so keep, it, keep note that I slept, but if there was multiplayer, it would wait until everybody was in the bed to uh, activate that high. So what high is going to do is going to go function a colon, then we just go with story slash um, sleep. Okay, so we're just going to start making some subfolders. So story would be anything that has to do with the story, things that advance what's going on. Uh, we're going to have other folders for like mechanics. So we're just going to copy one of these files and rename it to sleep. Okay. So what I want to happen when they sleep is I want there to be like nausea, maybe a sound effect, and then it will uh, teleport them all to another location. So we're gonna go effect give a, a nausea. Uh, I think I spelled that right. Nope, uh, nausea like that. Uh, five. Five, ten, true. One, two, three. Oh. Okay, that's actually good enough. It doesn't need to be too insane. We can adjust it later. And then we'll do, I'll add the play sound later, but it'll play a sound. Because um, I can't hear it, because I'm the way I'm recording right now is with uh, earphones and something else. Um, then the last thing is going to be, so we want this thing to happen after the nausea. So in five, well, let's make this 10. So after about eight seconds, we'll teleport everybody. So T, uh, so to make something happen after eight seconds, we would use a repeater, but, uh, we are going to use something more accurate and that's slash schedule. So we'll go slash schedule. Yeah, we'll do it here. Schedule function a colon story slash sleep one. So this will be the next this is sleep is the one we're playing. Sleep one is like the next one. And then after eight seconds, and then that's all you have to type. So I'll put that in here. So it'll play sleep one after eight seconds. And sleep one is literally just gonna TP, but I could add another sound effect if I wanted. So this will go up, we'll just go up 20 so you can see something happening. And then if I type reload, 
Oh, you also would want to go, when it happens, set everybody's score to zero. There you go, so it doesn't spam it. Because in this, it will keep spamming it because everybody, nobody has a score of zero. So we want to prevent it from spamming. We just want it to happen once. So if we type reload. Okay, so now we get in the bed and you can see my screen start to wiggle. And I guess it didn't TP me. I'm betting, oh, there we go. Nope, I did TP up. So the sleep, the actual skip today sleep occurs faster than uh, than eight seconds. So we'll have to adjust that. So let's go with uh, five seconds. Now we'll go into spectator mode. Oh wait, no, I did the TP uh, not upwards. I made it forwards. So we're just gonna wanna adjust this until it's just right. Um, oh, this is based on the world spawn. But yeah, so you'll TP, but you need to TP to an alternate uh, house. And just go ahead and do that. Okay, so we'll TP to an alternate house. So let's get rid of that scoreboard. So you can see that it basically works. After a certain amount of time of having nausea in the bed, it will TP you. So now we need the alternate house. So let's do that. This will be basically the last thing we do. We're just gonna create the alternate house really quickly. And I'll show you how to do that. So first we just wanna clone this house. So we wanna to go to the positive corner in the very bottom and type slash clone and tab complete while looking at the block, which is in the positive corner. Then we wanna go up to the other corner, which is right here, place a block somewhere. So like there and hit space T up and then tab complete so that you get the next set of coordinates in the clone command. Then you're gonna to wanna to fly somewhere else. Approximately here. This should be good enough, far enough away. And tab complete the last coordinates. Boom, boom, shika boom, boom. We got the copied house. And let's get rid of these leaves. Now the one thing we need to change is we want this to be slightly different from the previous house. So, and I don't wanna waste my time changing everything. So let's go ahead and just do one quick thing. So slash fill those coordinates to wherever I'm standing instead of just getting the coordinates again. So we're going to fill it with red carpet, replace light blue carpet. And there you go. So now all the carpets are red. And um, let's change the oak to dark oak. That might be cool. Oak. Planks, I uh, no. Spruce planks. Replace oak planks. Now we go spruce slab. Replace oak slab. Um. Hmm. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Some of these are off because it was the supposed to be the top half. But it at least saves some time for us. We don't want to make it incredibly different either because uh, I just want it to be slightly different. So a darker slab is just good enough. And a darker planks is just good enough, but not too dark. It doesn't need to be pitch black. Uh, okay, so let's just get rid of that. Uh, just small things we got to fix. Not too bad. Not the end of the world. Okay, this is the upward slabs. I could have probably just replaced all the slabs with top facing slabs. That might have saved me some time, but it's okay. So once we get all this filled in, we'll be good. 
it didn't copy entities so the uh slash clone doesn't copy entities so the slimes aren't there but that's okay because i don't want the slimes to be there anymore now it's going to be unlocked okay all right that's fixed up so now we just have this side to fix And then we just gotta fix this. Okay, cool. So there's our little different house. Uh, there's these stairs, but I think I'll leave the stairs for now. Eh, I'll change them. It's gonna bother somebody's OCD. So let's go ahead and change these stairs to their counterparts. Okay, we are completely swapped and we can probably change these flowers to, I think wither roses look nice. I like that. All right. This is the alternate house. And you'll see what happens next in the next episode. You're gonna see where things are starting to go. Maybe you already know where things are starting to go. Now we can see the other building from over here. We're gonna have mountains. We're gonna have, to, I'm, I'm gonna terraform while I'm gone, while I'm off of the recording. Um, but there you go. So the last touch would be actually getting here and that's gonna be simple. So we just have to go, we just map from here, right here, negative 28, 52, 102, okay, then we just come through here, oh, and that got deleted, uh, now we just come through here, and we go all the way back to this room, and we'll get those coordinates, and what do we do? We subtract them again, that's, that's literally it, let's break that. Breaking our way in. So we get these coordinates. 8, 52, 0. Sick and tired of Discord. I need to go into streamer mode, honestly. Uh, so we go from negative 28 minus 8 would be negative 36. 52 minus 0. Uh, 102 minus 0 is 102. So then we're just going to do a tilde and a tilde and a tilde. And we're going to do TP at P. And boom, we got swapped. So then you just have to go copy that, go into this one and do execute as at a add at s, run tp at s there. And that will, regardless of what bed you're in, always swap you to the correct one. So if I reload and go, so it's tp at s eight fifty two zero. Okay, I would sleep in this bed. And there you go. We ended up over here in this bed. And that's, I think, it for today. That was a lot of data packs and stuff like that. So if you guys enjoyed it, leave a like. Uh, let me know what you want to see in the next one. And uh, I'll see you later. Peace.